Hello, it's Polish Paul VR. Welcome to the channel. Latest PlayStation State of Play was pretty awesome. We saw quite few PSVR 2 games, but let's talk about five things that we learned from this event. Let's go! PlayStation VR can handle AAA games with ease. Now, listen, saying with this, I don't mean it's super easy to port a game to PlayStation VR, and also I'm not saying it's very easy for the developers to do, but what I'm saying is, once the game is optimized, once the game is properly ported to virtual reality, PSVR can handle it very nicely. We saw this trailer, we saw it, you saw it, I saw it, if you didn't saw it, you can see it now. If I didn't saw it, uh, then I wouldn't be talking about it, that means I saw it, you can see it. Some of you saw it most. So, anyway, Resident Evil 7 in virtual reality, that was a proper PlayStation VR 2 trailer. Now, trailer, I meant to say trailer. Now, listen, what's happened there is they basically got this next gen looking game running in virtual reality. Now, I'm assuming the pictures are a bit reformated because what's PSVR 2 doing? is having a very nice eyeball tracking. It finds your eyeballs and it says, <laughs> your eyeball, I gonna look at it all the time. And then thanks to that, wherever you look, looks better than when you don't look. Saves processing power and makes the games looks beautiful. That's how it's happening. But also that combined with the PlayStation 5 pure power just showed off how cool the games can be. And also, of course, don't forget Apart from Resident Evil uh, 7 Village, which is amazing, uh, we also saw the very, very nice... Did I say 7? Of course I mean 8, Village. But we also saw Resident Evil 4 being showcased, and what they said is they doing PSVR 2 content, so there will be some sort of PlayStation VR mode. It's either gonna be a full game playable on PlayStation VR, or there will be some, I don't know, level selections and, and stuff like that. Whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty awesome. So they just showed what they can do. Okay, number four. So now Sony wants bigger games, especially at launch looks like it, or the launch window, let's say. What they showcased was pretty epic. I already said uh, and got very excited about Resident Evil 8 and 4. Uh, who's getting confused with the Resident Evil numberings now? Because I'm definitely do, but anyway. Both games looks beautiful, but of course that wasn't everything what they showcased. What about this pretty awesome trailer for Horizon Call of the Mountain? That looks pretty nice. You remember when they first revealed it and there was that bit on that boat and everyone was thinking it's gonna be game on rails? Well, this bit on the boat is just the experience within a game, so it looks like releasing just experiences not gonna cut it. They got the experience within the actual game Horizon, Call of the Mountain, looks like it's an open world mountain, <laughs> that's how I'm seeing it. So we've got this mountain to climb, what you're climbing, and you can like, go everywhere, I think. But it's not proper Horizon, uh, proper like open world massive game, <laughs> but listen, those graphics look pretty epic. So that's done by the studio as well, that gets VR very nice, so I'm glad the Gorilla Games choose them. I'm talking here about Fire Sprite. You played the persistence, you know how good it is. And that's gonna lead me to the number three, which is older games can get an upgrade on PlayStation VR 2. Now, how we know it? We know it very, very easily, because what we saw during this state of play was No Man's Sky, updated for PlayStation VR 2. Gone are the blurry, blurrinesses. Gone are the movie, moviness of the light bulbs. Gone the game, the PlayStation VR, trying to guess where your hand is because you, your, your hand, you put it behind your back and Sony uh, PlayStation gets like a big best guess thinking, hmm, definitely, this, his hand is inside his head. That's how very bad guesses PS4 was getting. So yeah, everything uh, adapted for the next gen. That's why I spoke about Fire Sprite, because it would be pretty awesome to get persistence for PSVR to upgrade it. And I wouldn't see that happening because they upgraded the game for PlayStation 5, the flat version. So who knows, who knows, we might see that as well, playing Persistence with proper motion controllers. That would be heaven. So yeah, older games can get, get that, yes, very nice. 
And also look at Saints and Sinners, that's gonna be a cross-gen title, we're gonna see how it's gonna compare PSVR 1 to PSVR 2. That's gonna be a very good indicator, but I'm glad uh, that they gonna do some older games, because my best guess is there won't be backwards compatibility, uh, and that's because it's totally different system tracking. It's inside out for starters, it's better, and it's gonna be probably a lot of reprogramming if they want to just like do backwards compatibility. But it looks like some developers just gonna go ahead and say, okay, well, yeah, let's do some programming. We're gonna make our game next gen. Another bit of information is at number two, which is release date probably in 2023. Because, of course, coming back to Saints and Sinners once again, they showcased this PlayStation VR 2 trailer. At the end of the trailer, it's told you what platforms it's coming to. It's coming to PSVR 1, it's coming to Quest, it's coming to PC, and of course, it's coming to PSVR 2. Now, all those platforms, it says they're gonna be getting Saints and Sinners in 2022, apart from PSVR 2, because the release date for PSVR 2 will be announced at a different time. Now, the one might ask, hmm, what time it's gonna be and why they not saying that? And that is because probably Sony themselves wants to uh, first announce the release date. And my best guess is because Saints and Sinners are already gonna be on PSVR 1, this game will be a launch title for PSVR 2 as well. And they just cannot say anything at the moment because they have to wait for Sony to actually go ahead and confirm the release date for everyone. So that's what's happening, that's my uh, take on it. Okay, and number one, I left it to number one because number one is just the best. So. I want to say this, there is much more to come and listen, we only saw, saw like five games, we saw two Resident Evils, we saw No Man's Sky, we saw Saints and Sinners and we saw Horizon and those games blew everyone away and there is more to come and I'm definitely 100% sure because uh, Gran Turismo Sport uh, 7, let's say 7. That will happen for PSVR. The developer been saying how much he loves virtual reality. The developer been saying that the future of this uh, game is in VR. Sony got their cards closer to their chest that we're thinking. There is many, many, many more games to be revealed. Many uh, first party titles that's gonna get PSVR 2 mode as well. But they're not gonna tell you all the information at once. They want to keep the hype going. And uh, judging by the quality of their games, what they showcased yesterday, the things just can get much, much better. What we're gonna get, I don't know, uh, GT7, like I said, that's probably a given, 100%. Will we get some sort of flying sim? You know what? I would love to have Ace Combat 7 playable in full VR. I don't know if they're gonna do it. But there is Project Wingman on PC, which is pretty awesome game, very comparable to Ace Combat 7, if it's not better, uh, just let's, let's uh, you know, cinematic cutscenes, but gameplay-wise, hmm, it's a beauty. So who knows, maybe the developers gonna port that, uh, they might as well, what they got to lose, eh? Go and tell them. So yeah, that's it, that's the five things that we learned from the yesterday's state of play. I hope you all excited, as I am, because I cannot wait for PlayStation VR 2. If you want any information about PSVR 2, this channel is the place to be. I'm doing it daily, so stay tuned. And of course, before I go, big, big shout out to all the patrons. You are all awesome. And that's it. Bye.